sign Ricky forward to someone? Yeah. I didn't assign anyone yesterday. Yeah. Esther May Bird, did I assign anyone to her? Yeah. Need to assign. Okay. You got it. Are you on a film today, uh, Angela? No. You got Esther? She is. I don't know. I want to say that from the beginning. Yeah. I just thought that that's what. <coughs> that would be right on time, Angela. Huh? She says, I already ready, Angela. So, Angela, you take Ricky forward then. Verley, Cofield. Okay, so that's going to be you, Brent. Um, no, Angela got the other one. Help me out, y'all. Roshana. Roshana went on a death call yesterday, y'all. Yeah. yeah, she made her, she was such a bad employee, she made her partner sick. <laughs> he called you in this morning, Roshana. What you do to JD? <laughs> now that's some funny stuff, ain't it? I'm done, y'all. Can y'all believe that? I am done for today. You got what? Now you got some notes for us. Go. On Lindsay Howe, uh -huh. they need four easels and two long tables. Four easels, two long tables. On who? Lindsay Howe. Is that for today? Uh huh. Eleven o'clock in Allen. Who's on that service? Anybody got that film today? They have four easels already. Who's on the film? Nate. Who's Nate, me? Nate, Nate. Nate, Nate you gonna be able to make sure that happens? Who else gonna make it happen? Nate or Betty ain't gonna make it happen. Bush. Who's gonna make it happen? Bush. Bush is not even here. She ain't know where he is. Who else gonna make it happen? I'll make sure they can. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Then on Shamika Robertson, need an easel also, one o'clock in John. Who is this? Shamika Robertson. Shamika Robertson. Who got Shamika Robertson? I do. Did you hear what she said? Yes, sir. Are right, you got them covered? Yes, sir. All right, good. Hobbs says closed casket. Who got Hobbs? I do. Did Hobbs. you hear what she said? Yes, sir. Yes. And then on Isaac Henry, it says green tag. Isaac Henry, everybody got that? Come get your N95. Also on Isaac Henry, the family dropped off his dentures last night. They were placed in the casket as well. So they're good? Yeah. We don't need to get them out, do we? Um, no, they won't get stay. cremated. To stay with him now don't put in the casket where do we need to put him if we want the ninja to stay with him y'all and his pocket are somewhere so they what because the casket ain't gonna stay with him right all right somebody make a note who's putting up uh who's moving the dentures you got them? okay that ain't okay let's go hold on one second i do not Hold on, look at the folder. I have the folder. Who made arrangements with David Jackson? For Mika. Okay. It doesn't say. How you know it's counsel? It says counsel on the front of the folder. Okay, good. She they verbally did. told us. Okay, do we have a Deborah Stewart for today for Fort Worth at 11 o'clock? I do, 11 o'clock memorial service. Okay. With an urn, is that set up, Kevin? Yes, sir. All right. Do we have the programs in here? For Deborah Stewart? No, for today's service. For today's films. Me, Trina? No, I didn't bring them. She's going to get them. Okay, and we have a question on Richard Dickerson. How many limousines? The front of the folder has two, but the contract had one. Okay, we did go with two. Is that correct, you guys? Yes. Okay. You got two for them? That's, that's Uncle Frank's brother. Make sure we have checks on Willie London. Willie London, who's on that film? Checks are with the program. Steven, wave at me. Go get your check. Go make sure you got it now. For Vicki Randolph, we were supposed to confirm with the family whether or not they were doing the Facebook Live at the cemetery. Yes. Greg live stream at cemetery. Greg, where are you? Right here. You take him to the cemetery. Yep. We have a for Ivy Cottrell. Hold on, stop for a second. Ivy Cottrell. Who has Ivy, you guys? Nick and George. George. Who, George and who? Nick. Nick, you still with me? Yes, Come on sir. down here, Bishop. Go get Bishop a chair. Uh, Thank you, sir. And fellas, which I'll go get uh, Bishop a chair for me. Nick and uh, Nate, go get right. Bishop and Mike a chair up here. They keep his body going safe and close. Come on up here, Bishop. Take this first seat. Y'all say hello to my pastor, Bishop Jeffrey Thomas, our vice president of the operations. Y'all ain't going to say hello to my pastor. Uh, some people just get recognized they walk in. <laughs> President Obama walk in, y'all jump up. A judge walk in, get ready to send you to prison, you jump up. 
the man of God that pours into your life, where it's only you still alive, <laughs> walks in and you don't get up. Because you know you should have been dead. Uh. That's so true. Uh, you never know what's going to come out. You never know what's going to come out of that gap. <laughs> Beside the truth, did it come out of that gap? Which one, Kurt? All right, I'll stop. All right, let's go. Are we ready? Live stream, let's go. Hold on. Who got Ryan, you guys? I do. You got live stream? This is on the screen. Okay, I don't have it on here. It is on the post. Where is it? But not really. It was written after the 5, 15. 15. It's a 15. Look under the program. Show the program. Yeah, it's the program. I'm there. Ryan Street. So Greg's going to be able to do that 11, 11.30 in Moore Cemetery in Arlington and come back and make it back for the 3 o'clock. It's just 2, 11.30 at 3 o'clock. Think you good? Yes, All right, don't forget about the cemetery. All right, anything else, y'all? I'm trying to quit. Going once, going twice, we good. Kevin, you got your list. Bishop! Glad you made it, man. I was worried about you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you like Cat Williams. He might show up. <laughs> <laughs> they don't come for you, no, pass. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Certainly, today is a great day. It's a great day of celebration. Uh, Forty years is a long time. Yeah. Greg, come get that sleeve up and run. It wasn't running on the other folks, was it? No. You sure? You just uh, got to start? Yeah, we started. There's a lot of me. And we right. salute. <laughs> we salute our founder and owner, Dr. Johnny Becker Sr. certainly fulfilled and is still fulfilling his vision. Mm -hmm. I have great memories of Golden Gate Funeral Home. There were a lot of good days and there have been some not so good days. There are a lot of people who have come and a lot of people who have gone good terms and bad terms. Many of you don't know, but the scriptures that we recite here daily, they fit into what has happened and what is currently going on here in this establishment. A lot of us from the early days have grown together we were not a perfect people when we came to this organization, but we were determined and we were resourceful. Uh, some of us had some good habits and some of us had some bad habits, but we worked through those things. The number 40 is very uh, significant. Uh, most people say, why not celebrate 50 years? But 40, the number 40 appears 157 times in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Moses spent 40 years in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Moses spent 40 years in the desert. Yes. Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. All right. There was 40 days between Jesus' resurrection and the ascension. All right. So you see, huh? I, was, I learned all that from 40 years hanging out with great people great people who were some who were called by God and some who were called by John Beckwith Senior uh, but I learned some of those things and kept those with us so you see that 40 has a significant value. one of the uh, scriptures that we read is uh, Romans 7 21 mm -hmm. and it says I find it alone but when he would do good he was always present so we were early days we were following along and then there were members who decided to go with uh, another law if you continue to read past that scripture it says that they started dwelling in another law and and it uh, pulled 
others into a sin. I think I remember a couple going to the labor board. <laughs> Preach! Uh oh, well, I ain't, I'm going to leave that alone. If you were here, you know. You heard that But then, uh, Carolyn, it reminded me uh, a long time ago, her favorite scripture is Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in our well doing, for in due season, uh, you'll be purchased. Yeah, if you pay that. But um, another one is uh, Psalm 133. We don't read that one, or we don't recite that one here, but it uh, just says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. And that's what we did in the early years. We were together. Even though there was different things going on, we were together. I mean, we hustled up our money, went to the pawn shop, got a TV so that we would have television. <laughs> then we had one of our members who decided to take the TV. <laughs> but, but through it all, it's, it's been good. And, and we're looking forward to another 40. Now, I may, I may get to see it. I may not know I'm seeing it. But, you know, with prayer and, and with hard work, uh, we'll make it. Uh, that's all that I have. I just wanted to just kind of open it up. Uh, Mr. Beckwith, we want to thank you for this day and, and thank you for your leadership. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to, to get a gift for someone uh, who has just about everything. Uh, very difficult. But, but one of the best gifts that you could give him is your, your support and your fellowship. So again, thank you, Mr. Beckman. All right. I want to, uh, Kevin, to do all of this, but I see he got up and preached and sit down on me. That's all right. Did my solo show up? Let's move on without them. All right, y'all. First person we want to recognize is uh, Miss Charlotte Beckwith. Come on up, Charlotte. And, uh, thank you for having me out. Uh, Charlotte has been with the company since 1986. So let's see what you got, Charlotte. Come on up here, Charlotte. Show us what you what you got from the company. Turn around to the sling. All right. What's inside your bag? All of you guys is also the daughter to the founder and owner. All right. John Beckwood. And Allie Beckwood. Let's not forget. Michael what is that? Let me see. Beautiful. Open up. Open up. You got your gold watch. All right. Congratulations. Come take a picture with me. Uh huh. Come on, I'm going to make you look good. Come on. One, two. Got it. All right. Thank you. Her heels are trying to be taller than me, but that's well, all right. Taller than me. Let's give Charlotte a hand. And in her absence, we want to recognize Sarah Bardo. That's been here for 33 years. Since 1987. Next on our list is Bishop Jeffrey Thomas, our Vice President of Operations. He's been here, you guys, for 32 years. All right. All right. Now, show him your gift. Show him your gift. Oh, okay. Open it up and show, show me again. Mm -hmm. I couldn't buy him a gold watch. That would have been a waste of money. <laughs> we have to stay together. Mm -hmm. Open it up. Be careful. What are we doing? Mm -hmm. It's not a gold watch, I can tell you. That. Oh, man. Huh? Mike, you see this? <laughs> Open it up. Come on, let's take a picture. <laughs> Why you don't blend up? Don't do that, man. Come on, 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 man. Come I'm <laughs> All right, y'all see what that this you got is a 45. Hey. <laughs> I got 
have to keep in mind, Bishop thought he was going to get up and get like a Michael Kors or something he was going to throw away. That is something he would use, I know, weekly. Congratulations, Bishop. All right. All right. Next is Nathaniel Bedford. Been here 30 years. Pretty good to hear. 34, 33, 32, and 30 out of the 40 years. That's how hard it is to make it any place for that long. And y'all, we have been through a lot. We've been a, a lot of ups, downs, changes. I get up every morning and tell you to fire yourself, to see yourself, see yourself home. Hey, so Lewis, come on, I gotta take a picture. What you get, Captain? You gotta go. You gotta, you gotta watch. Yeah, they gotta go away. Come on. Michael, he said Michael's somebody. <laughs> That's a Michael Beckwith watch. <laughs> 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 All right, next we got Bertis Garrett. 30 years, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> I'm gonna open it up. Good luck. Let's see who you're working with. Got his new shoes on today, y'all. Oh, boy. Yeah. Get on up here, boy. All right. Next we have Michael Beckwith in his absence, 29 years. All right. All right. All right. And then we have Cassandra Coleman. Anybody been here 25 years way later? That's a long time back. We don't make a couple things, huh? Just a couple. Just a couple. That's what happens when you have an assistant, you got. You hear that, Carol? Get your own assistant. I write my stuff. Write your stuff. Sometimes the wind will blow your nose. And electronics. And electronics will disappear. He's trying hard over here. I don't know. Come on up here, Brenda. Come give me a solo while they find a the note. Come on, Brenda, girl. Sing, Brenda. Where's the kind of I'll play for it. Tell them what you're going to say. Can I get a mic? Oh, that's the one I'm I would have gave you a mic. You would have been late. Now, come on up. <laughs> you know, you got stuff to do with the devil all week. Where are you at? Yeah. 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 Y'all know that God is good. Everything was trying to stop me from getting here this morning. Call quit. Woke up at five, didn't have no voice. I said, Lord, what's the matter? What can I sing? I can't sing this morning because my voice is gone. Then around seven o'clock, I just stopped and started praying. And guess what he did? He gave it back to me. He said, you ain't thinking right. Just me and you 
I feel so lost Cause I don't know what to do Now what if I choose The wrong thing to do I'm so afraid Afraid of disappointing you so I need to talk to you and ask you for your guidance, especially today when my mind is so cloudy. Guide me until I'm sure. I owe. Nice. 
Body. And listen, you guys, we're going to place him into the Hall of Fame. Right. We're having a plant being made that will stay at Golden Gate Funeral Home at all times. And those people will be, we have uh, 14 people that's going to be placed in our Hall of Fame. All right. All right. All right. Qualified to get there is that you have to be here at least 25 years uh, to be considered hot. And then also they're going to receive gold jackets uh, as well. So you guys know we had this big to-do plan for our 40th year. We had invited 10,000 people to a 40-year uh, party this year. And then COVID hit, and this is where we are. So I thought today we would celebrate the people that got us to be 40 years as much as celebrating our family or the funeral home. So let's give them a big hand. All right, so we want everybody to come back, and we all want to take a picture together. Y'all know we never leave Golden Gate Funeral Home without words of encouragement. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. Everybody come on up. We're going to go across. Everybody got some masks on? You still believe better people make better what? Better people make better. Oh, better. Hey, y'all don't hide behind each other. Can we get on in there? So if y'all, this side will turn this way, and that side will turn that way. And... Andre, you got everybody? Yep. One, two, one more. One, two, got it. All right. I told you guys I would not be participating in anything today. So words and curses are going to come from uh, Pastor Henry Ivory. All right. <laughs> Reverend. While the preacher is coming, mm -hmm. I thought about a, One joke. an old undertaker. <laughs> who had been in business for many years, probably about 40 years, and he came on some hard times. And so he got in his first call vehicle and he drove to a cliff and he got out and he stood up and he looked up in the sky and he said, I'm gonna kill myself. My wife is going to leave me. 
My kids are acting bad. I'm running low on money. I'm just going in this thing. And a woman walked out from behind a rock. And she said, what are you going to do? She said, I'm going to kill myself. She said, I am too. She said, I've been so depressed, I can't get out of it. He said, okay, on, on the count of two, we're going to jump. And he said, one. And a man walked out from behind the rock. He said, hold on, what are y'all doing? He said, we're going to commit suicide. He said, I am too. Looks like the right thing to do. No specific reason. Let's just do it. The undertaker said, all right, on the count of three, we'll jump. One. The woman said, two. <laughs> Another woman walks out from behind the rock. She said, hold on. What are y'all doing? Said, we going to commit suicide. She said, I am too. My kids, they're just bad. They keep getting locked up. I can't do nothing with them. The undertaker said, okay, on the count of four, we're just going to all jump and we're going to end this. The undertaker said, one. The woman said, two. <laughs> the man said, three. The other woman said four. Everybody jumped except for the undertaker. He said, well, my business is looking better now. <laughs> privilege to come to you and celebrate you in praise and proclamation. It was glad to have come. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right. I want to thank um, John Beckwood for allowing me this uh, privilege to share on this historical day. I am humbled and honored to do such um, like our fathers would be, I know mine would be, who was gone to the glory, would be tickled to know that another generation is still working together. And so I want to thank him and let him know my hat is off to him today. Because every time you can deal with Negroes for 40 years, <laughs> You gotta know what you're doing. And to all of you who are part of the celebration, uh, congratulations. Glad to see my longtime friend, Brother Bishop Thomas. I was sitting there thinking, you know, we grew up together. We, you know, we used to all go over the Bible. You know, you don't see anybody all over the Bible. <laughs> but we were really sharpening each other's tools. And he went on to make an impact in my life, sung at my wedding, threw me a bachelor party, oh, names have been changed. <laughs> <laughs> names have been changed to protect him. <laughs> oh, but I want to thank Mr. Thomas <laughs> for being my, my friend. I feel like I can make it. The storm is over now. Mm. That's what I want to talk about today. Mm. Text that will provide context for us to preach is found in Genesis chapter 8, verses 13 through 17. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth nor removed the covering of the ark and looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. And the second month of the 27th day of the month, the earth was dried. Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, 
you and your wife, your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Bring out with you every living thing of all flesh that is with you, birds, cattle, and every creeping thing, so that they may abound on the earth. Be fruitful and multiply. I feel like I can make it. The storm is over. Now, those were the words to the song that young sister would come and sing at my anniversary every year. Mr. Beth Draper, she would sing that song especially for me. I always feel like at the end of a year that I was going into another year that wasn't going to be as bad as the previous year. But then I learned the hard way that storms are an irrevocable thread that are sawed into the fabric and fiber of all our lives. Yes. That no matter who you are, that no matter what you go through, you're going to have to deal with storms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Storms, they are, they are the cyclical calamities of our existentiality that places all of us on the same ground of commonality. In other words, what I just said is, no matter who you are, whether you're from the guttermost or the uttermost, you got to deal with storms. Whether you drive a Benz or you got a bus pass, you're going to have to deal with storms. Whether, whether you work on the top floor or you mop the top floor, you got to deal with storms. Right. Whether in your tender teens, your teachable twenties, and I call your number, just lift your head, your tireless thirties, your forcible forties, your fearful fifties, your seasoned sixties, settled seventies, aching eighties, nebulous nineties, or if you're lucky, a traditional one hundred, all of us are gonna have to go through some storms. All right, yeah. Epicurus puts it like this. Epicurus, the philosopher, says this that while we deal with storms, in uh, we deal with storms, our flesh deals with storms in the present. Our mind contemplates storms in the past mm -hmm. and the future. Mm -hmm. uh, Christopher Lichtenberg, the uh, German physics professor, says this: the only escapism from the storm is, is the graveyard. Uh, uh, and Job puts it like this. Job says this. Job says that man that is born of a woman is but of a few days. And those days are full of storms. I said storms because if you look at Job's life, all hell broke loose because of a storm. The Bible says that a great storm came and killed all Job's children and all of his land and, and destroyed all that he had. So it started with storms. And no matter what you do, you cannot escape the reality of storms. Storms can be tricky. Storms are tricky because when Jesus and disciples in Mark chapter 4, they set out on the sea. The Bible says that it was a cool Caribbean cruise, but after a while, it turned into a storm. Storms can be tricky. You can wake up one day and the sun is shining, and before the end of the day, you find yourself in the thunderstorm. And can I just give y'all some ideology? Because in Matthew chapter 7, it gives us a description of a storm, and it says, and the rain came down, which suggests that some storms come down from God. Yeah. That God sends some storms to help us grow. But then it also says, and the wind blew in, which says that some storms are because of stuff on our level. Sometimes the storm you're going through is because of the people you connected to. Sometimes you slept next to a storm. You might be you, you may be working sitting next to a storm. You, you may drive home with a storm. But some storms they blow in, but then it says that the waters arose up, which means that's another location. They either come down, blow in, or they come up, they arise. Some storms come from hell. Because the Bible says that Jesus and disciples were on their way to save Legion and a storm came. Storms can be tricky. But not only can they be tricky, they can also be troublesome. Mm, all right. 
Storms can be troublesome because you remember in the same incident, the Bible says that the water start mess, the wind start messing with the water, and the water start messing with the boat. You can tell a satanic storm because it's one thing that happens after another, after another. Ask Job. Uh, one man came in and said, Job, all you all your cattle is gone, all your fields are gone, all your kids are gone. It's one thing after another, after another. That's how you know you're in a satanic storm. And you know what? It surprised, no, it shouldn't surprise me that Satan always got a witness, but God ain't got no witness. Because the Bible says that I was the only one left to give you the report. Can I get a witness in here? Uh, Satan always got, got, got a witness. In that. And then it, it's, it's, storms can be troublesome. Watch this now because the Bible says the water started messing with, the, the wind started messing with the water. The water start messing with the boat, and the boat start messing with the disciples, and the disciples start messing with Jesus. Y'all not getting this. And, and, and what the disciples are trying to do, Bishop, they were too busy trying to get water out the boat. Oh, I wish this was Sunday morning. They, they felt like if we get enough water out the boat, we can make it through our journey. But what they didn't know, the problem wasn't the water in the boat. The problem wasn't what was seen. The problem is what was not seen. Now, that's why when Jesus woke up from his nap, he did not speak to the water. He spoke to the wind. He spoke to what you couldn't see. And when he spoke to the wind, the water laid down. You see, too many times we try to deal with our storms based on what we see. We too busy trying to get water out of our boats. We too busy with water buckets, but if we can get more water out the boat. But sometimes you have to learn how to step into the spiritual realm and the seen. And if you deal with the unseen and deal with the spirit realm, Every Negro, everything in your life that's giving you trouble will have to lay down because he will say, Peace be still. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, storms are storms, storms are tricky. They are troublesome, but they are also temporary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're also temporary. I like this, y'all, because when we read this text today, look at the, the look, look, look at what the text says. You must understand. I want to talk to my young neophyte mentees in the ministry. There is nothing superfluous in scripture. Uh, I, I, I know your seminary professor taught you that and that means there's nothing there that's not supposed to be there and there's nothing not there that's not supposed to be there. Yeah, right, right. And so when you read this text, there's this word that keeps popping up. I read it for you once, I'll read it for you again. In Genesis 8, 13, it says, uh, and after 600, after the uh, first year, it says, and the water was dry. And then the next verse says, the surface of the ground was dry. And then in verse 14 says, and the earth was dry. Whenever a word just keeps popping up like that in the same verse, God is trying to tell you something. Now, dig this, y'all. We're talking about a flood. God has flooded the whole earth, and we know water causes wetness. That water causes, we're talking about water everywhere, but then God has the audacity to throw the word dry, dry, and dry in this text. Y'all understand? It's wet water everywhere. Folk done drown. Animals are dead because of the water, but God hollers out and say, dry, dry, and dry. Y'all not get that? It's water everywhere. And then God says, dry, dry, and dry. Oh, uh, let me help y'all. Some of y'all didn't get that. What God is trying to tell you uh, is that it ain't going to rain always. Uh, come on, talk to me. That the sun will shine again. Uh, uh, Grandpa put it like this. I'm so glad the trouble don't last always. I stopped by to tell somebody who's been in the storm too long. Uh, maybe it's been 40 years or 40 days. I don't know how long you've been, but God told me to tell you it may be raining now, but there's going to be a time where God going to say dry, dry, and dry. And if you don't break down before you get your breakthrough, God's going to let the sun shine. I'm going to watch this now. Why, why he, he, he says, he oh, says in this text that it ain't going to last all the way. But now, what do you do? Mm -hmm. That ain't what I want to talk about. Help us, brother. Help us. Uh, 
storm. Mm -hmm. Bible says 40 days. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. 40 days it rained. 40 days it flooded. 40 days folk died. 40 days people drowned. That, that's something strange and unusual about that number 40. It's, there's no incident or accident here that we are celebrating 40 years of service. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just, the other day, I was just talking to Angela outside the chapel. I said, you know, God put this heart on, a sermon on my heart. I didn't even know this day was coming up. About 40. You know, there's something strange and unusual about the number 40. Jesus was uh, uh, testing in the wilderness for 40 days. 40 is the number of testing. Uh, he stayed around, as, uh, 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 as Bishop said, he stayed around for 40 days after he died. 40 is a strange number. Elijah fasted for 40 days. There were three human kings. Uh, uh, they lasted around 40 years apiece. That was uh, Saul, David, and Solomon. Uh, 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 yeah, Moses had children of Israel in the wilderness for 40 years. Uh, uh, Jonah prophesied to the Ninevites for 40 days. Uh, Moses' life is divided in 40s. He spent the first 40 thinking he was somebody. The second 40 realized he was a nobody. And the last 40 tried to save everybody. There is something strange about the word 40. 40, 40 is also a word that means new folk. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. 40, 40. 40 is a word that, 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 that describes focus, a new focus. So after 40 years of serving, after 40 years of bearing people and having, helping for what's the focus right now? I mean, it's a new, you know, and I can go farther than that. Eight times five is 40, right? And eight is the number of new beginnings. Five is the number of grace. What are you going to do with your new grace beginning? Oh, brother. What are you going to do with your new grace? It, 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 it says, 40 suggests you've passed the test. You, you've gone through the trouble. You, you, you survived the breakup. You survived the divorce. You, you survived cancer didn't cure you. Diabetes didn't destroy you. Your heart ain't broke no more. You made it through. You're at 40. You got a brand new grace beginning. What do you do with this new grace beginning? Well, the first thing most of us want to do is we want to run back and get to life like we know. Mm -hmm. oh. I mean, think about it. You've been on the boat for 40 days and 40 nights mm -hmm. with stinking animals. Y'all yes. do know it stunk on that dog, don't you? Yes. Yes. Come on, talk to me here. I mean, he had lions and tigers and bears on my. He had all kind of animals on the boat. Yes. And what animals do, they eat, sleep, and... Yeah. 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 I said what you said. They, they eat, sleep, and so, so you had snakes, and the snake had to eat, sleep, and... I didn't say it, you said it. And so he had to deal with snake stuff. Uh, or the dog eat, sleep, and... He had to deal with that mess. And then the cows would eat, sleep, and he had to deal with that. And then there were bulls. And the bulls eat, slept, and he had to deal with all of that for 40 days and 40 nights. So you can imagine he's trying to get off this boat. I mean, you know it had to be pretty bad because... We wonder why the church is so bad and why and the church is just messy. That's because, uh, like the funeral home, we let all types in. I mean, we let we, we, we let lions in, we let tigers in, we let snakes in, we let dogs in. You got all of that in the church and the funeral home, and you wonder why it stinks. It's supposed to stink, but the good news is, if you're in the ark of safety, you shall be saved. What do you do? I'm glad. First thing God do is, I'm going to take a word from John. We got to relax. Relax, baby. Come on, Reverend. Relax until your condition change. Just relax. Relax. All right, all right. Don't, 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 don't rush out there. Relax, relax, because the waters are still murky and muddy. It's still messy. And God says, Noah, you, you got to stay on the boat another year. I know. You supply, you passed the test. Mm -hmm. I know you're here on Mount Elrond, but right now you need to relax. Mm -hmm. Don't rush right. back into your whole life mm -hmm. because it's messy out there. And God says, Noah, I don't want you to be messy. Mm -hmm. Noah says, God said, Noah. I've invested too much into you. I've brought you too far. I've delivered you too much for you now to leave the boat and be messy. And he just a 
how God done blessed folk, you almost died, how God delivered you, brought you back, you were homeless, and God done brought you up on your feet, you on Mount Airy, and you still messy, you still talk too much, you still gossip, you still messy. God says, no, I don't want you to be messy, but also, he says that the water is still murky. Oh, no. 126, I'm not done there. It's still marking. And that you gotta have vision when you come off the boat. Well, I gotta hurry on. You got to you got to relax until your condition changes. You gotta reside under your covering, but then also uh you gotta learn how to reevaluate your casualties. Because there are a lot of folk that die on the boat. I mean off the boat. There are a lot of things that Noah lost off the boat. But you must understand that that's the reason why God sent the flood in the first place. Because he was trying to get rid of some stuff that was in Moses' or Noah's life. You see, if you want sport to get away from you real quick, a lot of storm to come. A storm would chase a lot of folk away, but watch this, it did not chase the right people away. The folk that Noah went in with the storm were the same folk he came out of the storm. And what I'm trying to tell you is this, you better make sure, like you did today, you remember the folk who were with you in the storm and make sure you walk with them after the storm. But then there's productivity. He says, watch this now. He says, be fruitful and multiple. I wish I had time to talk about that. Then also, there's locality. He said, look where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. You're in Mount Sinai. I'm done, y'all. I can't, I, can't, I can't finish all of it. I'm in Mount Sinai right now. But be careful not to have storm withdrawals. Watch your voice, Rabbi. Be careful about storm withdrawals. Mm. When Noah landed, the Bible says that he made some wine and got butt naked drunk. Right. You, uh, you, you need to know that if you're not careful, the storm will yeah, make you show your behind. I don't know Christians here today who had to show them behind. At least one time or another. Yeah. Yeah. Did you hear me? And the Bible said he had two sons. One laughed at him and the other covered him. Yeah, he was there naked, laying by himself. Somebody said he was drunk, but I stopped by to tell you, don't blame it on the alcohol. But what you need to do is know that he was a strong withdrawal. That was not a pop there with you in the chat. All right, everybody go ahead and stand to your feet as we thank John Baker Sr. for sharing his dream with us. Colleen yeah. Becker for helping to come through. Michael Ford, our only forgotten brother, mm -hmm. passed away. Let's not forget him. Thank you, Bishop Thomas, for preaching both of their funerals. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. And thank you, Chandra, for putting this together in such a yeah. short period. Yeah. Uh, let's give Chandra a big hand. Thank you, Pastor. I have 40 years of the flood, you guys, and storms. But we also had 40 years of dry, dry, dry. Thank God for that. Let's give him a big hand for the work. For the work. 40 years of service, you guys. Everybody had something about 40, didn't they? The period of years represent, check this out, Ashlyn, the time it takes for a new generation to arise. Did you hear what I said? It's time for us to sit down somewhere, Bishop. Did you hear what I said? It's time for the new generation to arise. All right. Your turn, Pastor Eton. Thank you, Mr. Becker. God bless you. There's a book called the Bible. Uh, well, if you open it up in the middle, it's, it's Psalms 118. And if you want the center of scripture, this is what it says. It's best to put your trust in the Lord, mm. then put your confidence in me. Yes, yeah. Mr. John Sr. got ran out of Louisiana. 
But when he got to Texas, he recognized that his confidence needed to be with God. So look here, 40 years later, we now able to say we come this far by faith. Lean on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Steps are getting shorter. Our sight is getting dimmer. But he never failed us yet. So, Father, here we are saying thank you. Thank you, Lord. But we recognize a few more years to A few more seasons going to come. And we too must be with those that rest. Sleep within the tomb. But all oh, my Lord prepare our soul for that great day. Washes in your precious blood. Take all our skips away. And Lord, while we're here, we go service these families with a spirit of action. Recognizing that it's them today, but it could be us this afternoon. But Master, most of all, we want to thank you for your darling son, Jesus. The one that one Thursday stood up for us. One Friday died for us. One Saturday took that hell in the grave for us. One Sunday rose for us. Forty days later went away for us. But one of these old days. Woo! Thank you now. Thank you. Amen. All right, staff, be mindful when you walk out. Families are already here uh, for their 9 o'clock service. Fellas, come up and help Chandra remove this and remove the table.